gentlemen, Ted Rogers, Chris Emmett and George Roper, Karen and Dusty Bin, and the 321 girls. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another friendly Friday session of, well, you know what it is you're on. What is it? Did it in one go. Wasn't bad, that, was it? Very easy to remember. It's a show in three parts with two sections and one hour of fun. That's three, two, one, you're on. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as usual, we've got some very uh, interesting people and parties in our audience. For instance, here we've got the meanest man in the country. <laughs> yeah, he knows that. He's even said so himself. <laughs> Give you an idea how mean he is. The other day he went to a fortune teller and she read his knuckles. <laughs> This gentleman here is the laziest man in the country. True. That's true. He's not done a day's work in 20 years, have you? No, it's true. Really is true. He, mind you, he's very religious. He even worships a bone idol. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the great thing about having you with us on ITV, when you think about it, with ITV, you need never be lonely because with the commercials, you can spend a day with the stars without even leaving the house. I mean, you can have a pot of Roy Hudd or a cup of David Niven. You can spread your bread with some Leslie Crowther or have a big bite of Muhammad Ali. Give the cat a dish of Leslie Judd or mop the floor with Molly Weir. Plan your New Year's sales spree with a Dudley Moore or strap a Ronnie Barker to your wrist or move to a new Patrick Allen. You can even drive off in a 1980s two Ronnies or sit back with a glass of Orson Wells or relax with a bottle of Donald Pleasance. You can pop a June Whitfield into the oven or have a nice hot bowl of Bernie Winters. Wash down with a Leonard Rossiter, but be careful not to spill it over your Joan Collins. Enjoy a nice pipe full of Sandra Dickinson, splash on some Henry Cooper or just have a good flush with some blue Kenneth Williams. <laughs> Meet the container who just cannot contain himself and his shapely chaperone, that's Dusty Bin and Karen Palmer. Really? Now, uh, now, Karen, tell me, how is he this week? Oh, he's fine. But, you know, he received two fan letters today, both from Lady Bins. Fan letters from Lady Bins? Uh -huh. What were their names? Greta Garbage and Lottie Litter. <laughs> and one of them proposed to him. Get away. Just listen to this. A proposal for Dusty? A proposal. Just listen to this, folks. Dear Dusty, please will you marry me? And who knows, before long, we might hear the patter of tinny feet. <laughs> you might well do that. OK, Karen, take him away. Okay. See you a bit later on. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, anybody wins him, they take home a brand new dustbin. As usual, our three couples are waiting to play 3-2-1. Please, will you make them feel at home and greet them right now? This is Gillian and Andrew Lump from Yidden in Yorkshire. Here with me are Jenny and Rupert Quested from Hayes in Middlesex. My couple are Wendy and Ian Kaplan from Paynton in Devon. Thank you, Zoe. Thanks very much. Now we've got Ian and Wendy from Paynton in Devon. Ian and Wendy, now I know that you two met in rather a different way to most people, didn't you? Uh, that's right, yes. Um, on, on a judo, judo mat. mat. <laughs> on a judo mat? Yes. Yes. I had my knee in his chest. Really? And he was flat on his back. Oh, I see. Step think... over strangle hole's got a new meaning now. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about your social life? What do you do sort of for hobbies and things like that? We run a theatre, a small theatre. A small theatre? In Painton? Yes, in Painton. Yes. It's now, a theatre got... club. Really? Yes. Now, I know that there's a festival theatre in Painton, yes. isn't there, of course? And there is another small theatre I played many years ago. Is it the Palace, Palace Avenue? Avenue? Is that yes. still going? Yes, it's about really? to get the shop, I think. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. But in your, your theatre is called what? The Bijou. The Bijou Theatre, yeah. eh? That lets me, this week's lady with the questions, it's Jenny Leyland. Jenny, thank you. Thank you, Jen. Hello, Jen. Okay? I'm sorry I'm a bit late, but I've been shopping in the New Year sales. Oh, did you get anything interesting? Hmm, I got something for the mother-in-law, an automatic letter opener. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I don't know about that. Uh, an automatic letter opener? Hmm, a steam kettle. <laughs> get me one. I've got to have one of those. Right, as you know, you know, we, uh, in the first round, you play for £10 for each correct answer. We like our couples always to answer alternately. Ladies first, of course. And in the first round, there's only three ways they can be stopped. If they make a mistake, repeat an answer, or if the time runs out. That's when they hear from one of our resident comedians. Now, Mike Newman is in pantomime at Liverpool, but joining us for the next three weeks, we have Mr George Roper. George? Actually, Mike sends his regards, by the way, and he's doing his knitting as usual. He's knitting me a pair of socks for me wellies. <laughs> 
<laughs> now then, as you're playing for ten pounds in the first round, we don't give you anything to start with this time, all right? But good luck to you. Our couples have chosen their envelopes at random, so <laughs> either of them could have any set of questions. Now, this question is about the main languages of the world. We want the names of ten of the languages spoken by the greatest number of people. Now, we'll give you an example. Japanese, but you must not use Japanese, all right? So, main languages of the world, we want the names of the ten of the languages spoken most in the world today, starting now. English. Chinese. Russian. Indian. German. French. African. <laughs> You know, I didn't know there's so many languages spoken throughout the world. They're all spoken in Birmingham anyway. <laughs> no, but listen, do you know that David Attenborough, the explorer, he was looking for a tribe, the Putchi tribe. They're the people that do that Putchi dance. You know, you, you like, you put your left foot in, you put your left leg out. <laughs> in. <laughs> well, I'm afraid, Wendy and Ian, there, there was a mistake there. You said African. Well, of course, there are many language on the, languages on the continent of Africa. You also said uh, in Indian. Well, in fact, it's Hindi, but our adjudicator has accepted that. A few more you could have had there, like Spanish. Uh, what else was there? There was Arabic, Bengali. But uh -huh. how did they score then, Jenny? Well, Wendy and Ian, of course, scored six, which is 60 pounds. Six. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. That's a good start. Yes. Yeah, good start. Now we've got Rupert and Jenny. Rupert and Jenny Quested. Now that's a very unusual name, isn't it? Rupert and Quested. Rupert Quested. Sounds like an invitation from a cartoon bear. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever, I've never heard of that name before. I mean, apart from your family, is there another Quested that you know of? Not that I know of, no. I've never met another one. Really? What line of work are you in, Rupert? What do you I'm do? I'm a civil servant. I work in the Department of Trade. And uh, what about the Jenny? What do you do for a living? Or what have you done for a living? Um, well, at the moment, I'm a full-time housewife. Because you have two children, yes, right? Yes, that's right. They look at me and give them a quick wave. Go on. Hey, boy. Hello. Hey. Get to bed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and what did you do before you did, uh, in fact? I was a children's nurse before. Were you? Yes. Oh, I see. So yes. children all the way. So you really yes. got them under your thumb, have you? Well, yes. that's good. Nice to have the two of you here. And can we have their questions, please, Jenny? Thank you. Right, so far, you've just got a 60 to beat. You're going for £10 for each correct answer. Once again, a good luck to you. Okay. Uh, we want the names of seabirds and water birds found round the British Isles and on its lakes and rivers. Now, we'll give you an example, mallard duck, but you must not use that, all right? So, we want the names of seabirds and water birds found round British Isles or on its lakes or rivers now. Seagull. Herringgull. Moorhen. Coot. Uh, let me think. Oh, a fella selling seagulls on the promenade in Blackpool. 30p a seagull. I said, I have two. He said, take two of them. <laughs> well, Rupert and Jenny also ran out of time. A few more you could have said, like Grey Goose, Brent Goose, Heron, Diver, Crake. How did they score, Jenny? Rupert and Jenny have scored six, which is 60 pounds. Ooh. Also a 60. <laughs> well done. Well... Level pegging here at the moment, and now we've got Andrew and Gillian holding hands down there. Well done. <laughs> Why not? Keep yourselves comfortable. That's it. Now then, you, Andrew and Gillian. Now, Andrew, what sort of work do you do? I'm a dentist. Den <laughs> well, <I> mean, <laughs> <laughs> always such pleasant people to meet, aren't they? <laughs> no, it's nice. To, so you're Andrew, Andrew Lum. You're a dentist, so you're the Lum who makes our gums numb. <laughs> Good sir. <laughs> Gillian, what do you do? For I'm a, a dental nurse. Oh, you're a dental nurse. Yes. That's how you met, right? Yes. Well, you've got to be good, Andrew. I mean, hope you're as good at pulling teeth as you are at dental nurses. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Andrew and Gillian, good luck to you. You have 60 pounds to beat, right? We want the names of the 10 towns and cities of the British Isles, which have the greatest populations. Now, we'll give you an example, Liverpool, but you must not use Liverpool, so the 10 most populated British towns and cities now. London. Leeds. Edinburgh. Glasgow. Birmingham. Bradford. Manchester. Newcastle. 
Now, Liverpool has a large population, two million. That's four, pair of, four, four million pairs of wellies, that's right. The so overcrowded in one house, the gutters are on the inside. <laughs> you wipe... I'm finished yet. They wipe... They wipe the feces they're going out. Even the gypsies reported them to the council. <laughs> no, I'm finished. Well, there was a mistake, Andrew and Gillian. You said Newcastle. It's not in the top ten, would you believe, Newcastle? Nevertheless, how did they score, Jenny? Well, Andrew and Gillian have scored seven, which is 70 pounds. Yeah, 70. Oh. Right. So, at the end of the first round, we've got Wendy and Ian on 60 pounds, Jenny and Rupert also on 60, but in the lead at the moment, Andrew and Gillian, 70 pounds. Yeah. So... We come to the more difficult round for you, thanks, Jenny, to Wendy and Ian. Now, you're playing for £60 for each correct answer. You know, this time it is just slightly different. We still like you to answer alternately. The only difference is I'll this time ask you the question individually, and if you do not know an answer, just say don't know, and I'll go on to your partner with the next question. Remember, this time there's only two ways they can be stopped. If they make a mistake or if they run out of time. So, for £60 for each correct answer, good luck. This question is about terms used at sea. We will give you the nautical term, and we want you to give us the equivalent word used by a land lubber. Now, the bulwarks are the sides of the boat or ship. So that's the one we'll start you with. The bulwarks means the... Sides of the boat or ship. Right. Two, the bows. Um, front end. Three, starboard. Right side. Four, painter. Uh, rope. Five, galley. Cooking area. Six, deck. Um... Floor. Seven. Stern. Back end. Eight. Bar G. Don't know. Nine. Port side. Left side. Ten. Sheet. Um, sail. <laughs> Nautical terms. Now, there was a sailor home on leave and he went to a dance and he met this gorgeous young lady. He said, can I take you home? She said, no. He said, why not? She said, I'm not allowed to go with sailors. I've never been with a sailor. Mummy always told me to keep away from sailors. He said, but honestly, I'm a nice fella. She said, no. Oh, I says, come on, let me take you out. So she said, all right, I'll meet you at the poor side of Woolworths at eight bells tomorrow. <laughs> well, Ian and Wendy, there was one you didn't know there, eight burgee, and you made the mistake on the last one, ten sheet. You said that was a sail. In fact, it's a rope to control the sail, right? So, Jen, how do they score? Well, Wendy and Ian have scored eight, which is 480 pounds. Yeah. 480. <laughs> Hold on. Thanks a lot, Jenny. Thank you. 480, and here we've got Jenny and Rupert for 60 pounds for each correct answer. Good luck. This question is about the large ports of the world. We will give you the names of the port. We want you to say what country it's in. Now, Toulon is in France, so that's the one we'll start you with. Toulon is in... France. Two, Rotterdam. Holland. Three, Simonstown. Don't know. Four, Shanghai. China. Five, Murmansk. Russia. Six, Hamburg. Germany. Seven, Bombay. India. Eight, Wellington. Don't know. Nine, Rio de Janeiro. Um, South America. Large ports. Uh, a docker came out the dock gates with a great big bale of cotton on his shoulder, and the policeman said, what are you doing? He said, I've got the earache. <laughs> like that. Rupert and Jenny, there was a mistake. Uh, Rio de Janeiro was Brazil. Of course, Brazil is South America. That's what you said, South America. But we did want the country it was in. The two you didn't know, Wellington is in New Zealand. Simonstown is South Africa. However, how'd they score, Jenny? Well, Rupert and Jenny have scored six, which is 360 pounds. 360. <laughs> That's good. Thanks, Jenny. 360. Andrew and Gillian for 70 pounds for each correct answer. Good luck. This question is about seas of the world and the countries they wash. All right? If a, I know it's a good phrase, that, the countries they wash. <laughs> Some could do with a good washing, you know what I mean? OK, if a sea washes the coast of more than one country, we will accept any one of those countries. Now, the Coral Sea washes the north coast of Australia. So that's the one we'll start you with. The Coral Sea washes... North coast of Australia. Two, the Red Sea. Egypt. Three, the White Sea. Don't know. Four, the Aegean Sea. Greece. Five, the Bering Sea. Don't know. Six, the Adriatic Sea. Yugoslavia. Seven, the Tasman Sea. Don't know. Eight, the Yellow Sea. China. Nine, the Black Sea. Don't know. Ten, the Baltic Sea. 
overseas. Let me think. Oh, I've got a good one. Listen to this. About two little boys from Batley. <laughs> Went to the seaside at Blackpool and they took the wellies off. And one said, hey, your feet are black, aren't they? He said, we didn't come last year. <laughs> well, Andrew and Gillian, you ran out of time there. The few you didn't know, three, the White Sea, Russia. Five, the Bering Sea, Alaska, USA, or Russia. Uh, seven, the Tasman Sea, Australia, Tasmania, New Zealand. Or nine, the Black Sea was Turkey or Russia. How'd they score, Jenny? Well, Andrew and Gillian have scored five, which is 350 pounds. 350. <laughs> So at the end of our quiz this week, we've got Andrew and Gillian on 350 pounds. There's Jenny and Rupert on 360 pounds. But the winners this week of our quiz, Wendy and Ian, 480 pounds. Yeah, that was so close, Andrew and Gillian. You've just lost out by going through there with by 10 pounds, which is very, I think that's the tightest it's been really on our quiz. However, there's I've got your money. 10 in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. 350 pounds in fibers. There's your ceramic bin, of course. It's been lovely having you with us. Thanks so much, Gillian. Take care. God bless. Yeah. Good luck, Andrew. Thanks so much. What about a ripple, Fate? Eh? Smash it. Okay, we'll be back just after the break, ladies and gentlemen, to play the elimination game. We'll see you then on 3, 2, 1. Don't go far away. Two ladies and gentlemen, where our remaining couples from Hayes in Middlesex and from Peyton in Devon are about to play our elimination game. Now, the theme of our show this week is the sea. And as you can see, our game is a fishing game. Both of our couples have got a pool full of fish. They also have a rod each. Now, on the first whistle, ladies, we want you to start fishing, OK? With one hand behind your back. Once you've hooked a fish, throw it across to your partner, who will take the catch off and throw it onto the floor. Now, on the second whistle, you'll change places with your partner, which means the fellas do the fishing, throw the catch across to the ladies, they take the fish off the hook, put it on the floor. Third whistle, stop. We'll add up the score. Naturally, the one with the most fish on the floor goes through to part three, where all the big prizes are waiting. So, good luck to you all. If you would like to now get to your positions, please. And Karen is here with a whistle. Are you all set? Okay. Right, here we go. Three, two, one. Come into line and let's just see how well you did there. It wasn't quite as easy as it looked, was it, that? No. <laughs> now then, Sally, how did your couple score? Wendy and Ian scored seven. Seven they got. Right. <laughs> well, okay. well, is that enough? Yeah, it looks like it. How did your couple score, Annie? Well, Rupert and Jenny also scored seven. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we had to get a tiebreaker in one of our games. OK, it was a hard game to do, seven each. Now, this is the tiebreaker for you. Now, I'm going to ask you the value of something, and I want you to, give, to each give us your estimate. Now, the couple furthest away from the correct figure drops out, all right? We want the highest price ever paid at an auction for a painting. Two and a half million. Three million pounds. Ah. Well, would you believe that Rupert and Jenny, the figure is 2,310,000, so you go through. 3 million. They were just out. And we're just in there. Yes. Folks, 
I want to say a big thank you to Shirley Taylor, our researcher. She gets up some super couples. They all wish each other great luck. And that was very sporting of you, Ian. You too, you. Wendy. However, here is your money from the quiz. How much was well, it? Well, they've got 480 pounds. 480 pounds isn't bad. Your ceramic thing. Your leather photo frame, of course, and a photograph has been taken of you during the show. It's on the way. Okay, thanks so much, Ian, thank again. Thank you very much. Wendy. Say hello to Fanny. Yes. Love to everyone in there. Goodbye. Thank you. trip over the fish here. Would you like to go here on this corner here? Just stand just there. Rupert, would you like to come in nice and tight? I think you both know what happens here, don't you? Yeah. Yes, we've got five <laughs> sketches for you to see. We've got four terrific prizes and one booby. Remember, dusty bin. Win him, you've got a dustbin. When we have three on the table, I'll ask you to reject one. When you've rejected four in all, the one remaining determines the prize you take home with you tonight. Now, as I said, the theme of our show is the sea, those vast areas of water that cover two-thirds of our planet, and one of the human scourges of the sea has always been the pirates. And our first sketch shows you just some of the rough justice dealt out to a captured pirate. Bluebeard, you face a charge that carries the ultimate penalty, death. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Guilty? You can't plead guilty, man. Why not? You offered me the choice. That's a formality. You must take the opportunity to defend yourself. I'm a pirate. I offer no defense. You have the right for an officer to assist in your defense. Officer? <gasps> oh, I say. You're not helping yourself at all, Bluebeard. How many pirates have been tried on this ship? Five. How many have been found not guilty? None. They are, then. I'll plead guilty, it's quicker. Shut up! <laughs> Fish didn't fetch the cat! You threw it overboard yesterday after eating your pet mice. Right, Bluebeard, you have been found guilty. In view of the honesty and the frankness of the defendant, I feel that the court might give some measure of leniency in sentencing. Shut up! Bluebeard, have you anything to say in mitigation? Yes, I'd do it again. Again, man, you're signing your own death warrant. Look, just say sorry. Teeny weeny, itsy bitsy, little bit sorry. Shut up! I want to walk that plank, I tell you. Oh, all right. Bluebeard will walk the plank at first light tomorrow. Tomorrow? I'll do it now. It might rain tomorrow. I don't want to get wet. <laughs> it is a far, far better thing. Get on than with I it, can... man. Get on with it. I'm going. Ah! Oh, let's hope he goes to a better place. You were... Oh, I've just remembered. We're in dry dock. George. Hi, Ted. George, well and mate. I mean, what a bit of acting that was. I mean, a budding salary there. I'll be bad at work with... I've worked in Stafford upon Avon. Really? What a fellow? It was a bird. You take the mickey out of me. <laughs> I'll just... If Johnny Hamp could see you now. <laughs> now, what are you leaving, then, is the clue? Ah, uh, a little, little toy cat. A Ted. toy cat, little kitten. OK, little that's thing. the clue. And what about the rhyme, George? There's a little rhyme, it's here. There could be a mutiny, cos they've thrown away the cat. If there was no sound of him, you got it, just like that. Now then, Rupert, Jenny? Sound. Sound, ah. Oh. See what Music you're thinking. Center. Music centre straight away. Well, it's very good you're thinking. That's what we want you to do on this show. Ladies and gentlemen, George Roper. Cheers, George. Okay. <laughs> That's good. All right, you're thinking from day one. That's good there. You think there might be a music centre, do you? But there's a long way to go, Rupert, really? okay? I'm not so sure about that one. Keep looking for the bin, will you? Okay, let's move on right now. You know, songs about the sea have been written for hundreds of years, and it's always good to hear one performed by a singer with the same distinction. And here, with I Want to Go Home, a great buddy of mine, ladies and gentlemen, Lonnie Donegan. We came on the old John B. Grandpappy and me Over the seven seas We did roam We were drinking all day Fighting all night I feel so broke up I wanna go Captain 
they sure may want to go home Me want to go home I want to go home Well, I feel so broke up I want to go home Yes, I do Now, what are you leaving as yeah, the clip? Well, there you are. There's a money that's got to get more than I am. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, whatever it is, seashells. But I'll get Seashell nice toy, this. Yeah. It's pretty good, pretty isn't nice. it? Yeah. That's a, it's great to see you lot. Yeah, it's been quite it? a time, isn't it, since we soldiered at Blackpool through 16 weeks? God, yes. There you go. We must be 29 each now. No, I'm 38. 38? 38. You're only up to. Where does that Are leave you? me? <laughs> see, now, what about the, uh, the rhyme, then? What, what right, this What's is that? it. Are you listening? Yeah. This is good, this. Are you listening? She sells seashells on the seashore. <laughs> if you say seashells, you're knocking on the door. There. Can't say fairer than that. Any idea? Rip? No, they've got to think about it. Ladies and gentlemen, say a big hello and welcome. Thanks very much. Lonnie Donner. Cheers, Lon. Thanks a lot. Charlie! Lovely. Any idea, Rupert, what that could be? Seychelles for holiday? Oh dear, well, you, what do you reckon? You've got a record player there, and, and the Seychelles there. That's not bad, see? I don't know whether we've got that much to give away, but let's get on. <laughs> we'll get on right now with the next one on the table, then you've got to make up your mind about rejecting one. You've also got to figure out if we've got a car on the show this week. That's up to you. We know you've got the bin, right? We've got yeah. him on the show. This country has produced many fine men of the sea. There's been Drake, Raleigh, Chichester, but one overshadows them all, Nelson. And, of course, his greatest hour was the Battle of Trafalgar. This will be the most formidable battle of my life, Hardy. What about that tussle you had with Lady Hamilton on the balcony last year? This will be the second most formidable battle of my life, Hardy. Excuse me, gentlemen. Hello, Hello sailor. sailor. Another friendship sunk, sir. Good news, lad. Lad? This is Harry, my cabin boy. But this is a girl, sir. Not the way I see it, Hardy. But don't you know it's bad luck to have a woman on the ship, my lord? You speak for yourself, sunshine. You look tired, lad. Go to my cabin. Lie down for a bit. <laughs> Give me the glass, Hardy. Yes, sir. Not that one. Ah. <laughs> What's the state of the battle? Look, sir, the French flagship. Ah. If I'm not much mistaken, we shall soon see the end of Villeneuve, the French admiral of the fleet. What makes you say that? He's just split his breeches on a marlin spike. Split his breeches, has he? Sir. 
I can't see why they call him the Admirable of the Fleet. You've got the telescope the wrong way round, sir. Oh, good Lord, yes. <laughs> oh, good Lord, yes. Ah! ah. No! Ah! No! Oh, yes! Oh. The Admiral is oh. hit! Oh. Ah, oh, fate, how cruel you are. Uh, England's greatest son, felled by a stray musket ball, shot by a cowardly sniper, uh, robbed of our greatest naval tactician in this uh, the moment of his greatest victory. Oi, oi. Would that it were me in his stead. Would that the wayward ball had slain me in his place. Well, he didn't. God, God, this is my dying scene, mate. Do you mind? A little less of the Lawrence Olivius, thank you. Where was I? Oh, yes. Ah! Oh, oh, sinking fast. Sinking! Man the life of women, children, and hardy birds! May you bone of the boat! Dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, ah! Oh, thank God, thank God I have done my duty. Kiss me, hardy. Two years on this ship, and now he asks me. Chris? Hello, hello, shipmates. <laughs> <laughs> now then, Chris, what's the clue? I'm leaving for you a little dog in a sailor suit. Oh, yes. How about that? Well, it's cute, whatever. Okay. Yes, indeed. And yes. what about the rhyme, Chris? The rhyme is. <clears throat> the, uh. The rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> What do you call a half Nelson? A <laughs> half Nelson? Get! Oh, never mind. To hell with it. <laughs> oh, the old sea dog had a glitter in his eye and he beat a tattoo on his chest. A throwaway line might catch a big fish, but this might all be spoken in jest. Now then. Okay, Jenny and Rupert, we've got to make up our minds right here and now. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Emmett. Cheers, Thank Chris. you, Dad. Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay, Rupert. You just heard that from Chris. You can hear the uh, seashell that Lonnie left or the toy kitten which was brought in by George Roper. Which would you like to hear again? I think we'd like to hear that one again. The, You'd like um, to hear the kitten? The cat, yes. yes. All right. Yes. The kitten, the cat. Okay, George Roper said, could there be a mutiny because they've thrown away the cat? If there was no sound of him, you've got it. Just like that. So, what do you think? What do you think it I could be? Throw away the it's cat. Throw away. Could, put could the lid be. On. Yes, put the lid on, you wouldn't hear him. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got to make your mind up now. This one has just been left by Chris. There's a throwaway, throwaway line, line in that, that one, too. Well. Yeah, you yeah. see, we do get a bit cagey on this program, you know that. And you reckon this is what? Well, that could be a Seychelles holiday. Oh. <laughs> could be. Well, he's forgetting all about the Mediterranean. He's going far over a field. It's great. OK, folks, what do you say? One's got to go right now. The cat, I think. Cat. Yes? yes? OK, yes. Jenny, you agreeing with that? Yes. All right, then, you're rejecting the toy kitten which George Roper brought in. Could there be a mutiny because they've thrown away the cat? If there was no sound of him, you've got it just like that. So, you what, what did you say? I think it's a fur of some sort. You think it's a fur of some sort? <laughs> really? <laughs> Change their mind now, it's out of the envelope. It's got to go, I'm afraid. Now, well, the key word there was mutiny. Now, if they threw away the cat, what noise would it make? Yeah. A mew, yeah. Well, what do you have left in mutiny without mew? Tinny. And what do we have on this show that's tinny that people want to throw away? You've rejected Dusty <laughs> Tinny. <laughs> Get around that side, Jenny. Well, I'm afraid there's no fur there. No fur coat, unless no. you want to count his beard. Oh, I'll take it off. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dusty, about that. Oh, <laughs> nevertheless, I bet you're glad you got rid of no, him, no. right? No, All right, no. stick, stick with him just for a moment or so, because he's been won a couple of times this season. Not tonight, though. Folks, we're back after the break. More prizes. Three, two, one. The bin's gone. See you in a minute. Welcome to part three, ladies and gentlemen, where our remaining couple from uh, Hayes and Middlesex have just rejected Dusty, so at least they're going home with a good prize tonight, that we do know. Now, we're going on with our theme of the sea. It's had some superstitions, you know, since time began. I mean, since the days of sail, mariners have regarded it as unlucky to have a woman on board. And to this day, it's said that bad luck will befall anybody who harms an albatross. Motion! Look at that bird! Where, Captain? Up there! That seagull be following us for seven days now. That be an albatross, sir. Not for long, it ain't. 
Why? What are you going to do, Captain? Do? I'm going to shoot the thing. Shoot it? Yes, shoot it, Boston. I always shoot things I don't like, so watch it. Uh, quite, quite. But harming an albatross means bad luck, you know, Captain. Ah, silly, superstitious nonsense. <laughs> what possible bad luck could that bring? <laughs> <laughs> What are you laughing at? Oh, nothing, sir, nothing. But I did warn you that were a foolish thing to do. That be mutinous talk, matey. I have not had mutinous talk aboard my ship, do you hear? I will not. I will not. Oh. <laughs> More bad luck, Captain. Pure coincidence, I tell you. Oh, it's not as bad as I thought, Captain. The albatross is only badly stunned. Look here, folks, and if I hear any more talk about that albatross, I'll have you clapped in irons. Now, let's get this ship moving. Oh. We can't, Captain. Can't? What do you mean, can't? We'll be calmed now, and anyway, all the crew jumped overboard when they saw you shoot the albatross. I warn you, boatswain, if you mention... Oh. It's no use cursing the albatross, Captain. Cursing it, who's cursing it? I'm trying to give it the kiss of life. <laughs> Christopher Strawley won a Felix Bones Lardy Dars. <laughs> now, what are you leaving, Chris, as the clue? A toy parrot. Toy parrot. Great to have you with us, Chris, really. Thank and congratulations on the, uh, on the hit show, Only When I Laugh, with uh, Jimmy Bolan and, and, of course, Peter Bowles. But also, you had you were in Raffles. That was a big hit series. Yes, yes, it was. And everyone forgets that you do Shakespeare, of course, as well. Yes, I've done a couple of Shakespeare's for the opposition. <laughs> oh, we don't mind <laughs> your plug on that. No, great. Anyway, it is good to have you here. And have you got a rhyme, please? Or I have, again? indeed. There do be a spate of pirates after pieces of eight. If they knew what the treasure was, no wonder there do be a spate. Mm, spate. Well, it's not Johnny. I don't think it is anyway. <laughs> that we can tell you. Thank you very much. Christopher Strawley. Cheers, Chris. Thanks very much. So, Jenny, any ideas what that could be? Gold coins? Oh, so wait a minute, let's get this straight. You think that's... That's, uh... that's a Seychelles holiday. Oh, that is. You don't even think anymore. That is. That's good. And what is this? Any idea what the dog is? In the sense? No, but that's what? That's now... Chest of treasure. Oh, a chest of treasure. Fair enough. Well, okay. be a boat with a Seychelles. Well, you can, hear, you can hear the Seychelles again. <laughs> or you can hear this one here, the, uh, the dog in the sailor suit. Yes. The dog. You want to hear the dog in the sailor suit? Brought in, of course, by Chris Emmett, who said, The old sea dog had glitter in his eye. He beat a tattoo on his chest. A throwaway line might catch a big fish, but this might all be spoken in jest. So, you don't know, do you? <laughs> you make your mind up this Now the bin's gone, they're making up their minds. It's taken yeah. a long time. What do you reckon? The dog? Yes. 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 Okay, Jenny? Yes. You agree with that? Yes. All right. You're going to reject the dog from Chris Abbott. The old sea dog had a glitter in his eye. He beat a tattoo on his chest. A throwaway line might catch a big fish, but this might all be spoken in jest. So, in rejecting the dog, we did say glitter and we said chest. Now, what do you think an old sea pirate would have in his chest that glitters? Gold. Right, gold. And you've rejected a beautiful collection of gold sovereigns. <laughs> Look at that. Gold sovereigns. Doesn't that come down? Oh, they're falling away. There. <laughs> they really are gold. And I think they go back to the 1890-something or other, they say there. This certainly, he wants to have a look. He wants to make sure they're real. They're real, all right. Yeah, have a look are. at that one there, Jen. Yeah. I tell you what, there's certainly over a thousand pounds worth there. And of course, if you'd have won that, naturally, that would have increased in value as the years go on. However, it's been rejected. <laughs> it's got to go away. So thanks very much, Mireille. It's been rejected. Take it away. Whoa. And so we're going to have our last sketch now. You know, being shipwrecked is no fantasy, for it happens quite often. What doesn't happen often is being shipwrecked on that proverbial desert island. Shut your jaws and go away, go away. <laughs> Seven years. Seven years stuck here on this godforsaken island. You know it's you I blame for it, don't you? Oh, it's not altogether my fault, sir. I let you take the wheel once, just once, and what happened? Well, I've never driven a boat before, sir. Well, I've never driven a boat before, sir. <laughs> no, not unless you count those little ones with the paddles up in Blackpool Pleasure Bay. 
No, you don't, no. So, you wrecked the ship and we end up here. Now, must we go for us again, sir? And what did you write in the ship's log? Uh, must I, sir? Yes. Well, I swerved to avoid hitting something. And what was it you swerved to avoid hitting? Well, it was a mermaid. So, you swerved to avoid hitting a mermaid? Yes, well, you see... The trouble was that as we were going straight along, I thought we'd hit it. And as we hadn't got any brakes, I knew... Brakes? Brakes? Yes, I thought it was best to swerve. And so, oh, oh, look, so look. Look, I've caught a stunned albatross. <laughs> Isn't that lucky? Really, number one, if ever we get off this island, you're going to look pretty silly. Yes, sir. For seven years now, I've been trying to get you to tell me the truth, but all you keep saying is, mermaid, mermaid. Hey, are my eyes deceiving me? What is it, sir? Look, man, look! Good Lord, sir, it's, it's, it's one of those uh, big boat things. Big boat things? <laughs> it's a frigate, man! Eh? And they've spotted us! They're lowering a boat! We're going to be saved! Saved after seven years! Oh, it's jolly good show, sir, isn't it? Is that all you can say, number one? Oh. Jolly good show, sir? Sorry, sir? No, this calls for a celebration. There's a little secret I've kept for you, number one. A secret, sir? Yes. You may have wondered what those noises were coming from my hut in the middle of the night. Well, I didn't think it was any of my business, sir. Well, I've got a confession. Here. What is it, sir? It's a gobstopper. A gobstopper? I'm sorry, number one. I had a supply of them I kept with me. Do you mean to say I've been eating smelly old fish and dry coconut for seven years and you've been stopping your gob with gobstoppers? I think it's a bit much, I really do, sir. I'm sorry, number one. Privilege of rank, you know, but oh, yeah. here, take it. Well, <laughs> we'd better go and meet the rescue boat. Oh, yes, and I'm going to take the ship's log in case they don't believe me. Right, sir. Where are you going, number one? Well, I'd better fetch something, sir, in case they don't believe me. Yes, I expect you were wondering what those noises were coming out of my hut in the middle of the night. Well, I did think I heard something just a little bit uh, fishy, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Lance? Hey, Lance? Oh. Now, wait a minute, that's the clue, but what is it? It's a, it's a toy worm. A toy worm? It looks a bit like Larry Grayson, but don't be put on. Yes. Oh, look at the muck on there. <laughs> now then, Lance, listen, you, I mean, you must be used to all this, of course, the clues and stuff, what with your, your hit show, Who Done It? Who Done It? It's all right with Jeremy Lloyd. Yes, we're doing that in America now. I know, I understand Ed McMahon's doing it over there, yes, isn't he? Yes, Ed McMahon. I can't yeah. even pronounce his name. You can. Ed Thank McMahon. That. That's I'll, give you, I'll give you a little Who Done It thing, because the, the whole thing about Who Done It is just a quick clue. Mm -hmm. How many animals of each species did Moses take on the ark with him? Two. No. The answer is none, because it was no on the argus. Ah, yeah. I'll go along with that. You want to hear this? Please, please, Lance. Please, Lance. Uh, here's, the, here's the rhyme. This prize is in, and then it's out. Perhaps you'll need a pail. We'll get you hooked without a doubt on the finish to this tale. <laughs> there you go. Uh -huh. The very last one. Ladies and gentlemen, Lance Percival. Cheers, Lance. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Thanks a lot. And another Chelsea supporter. Now then. <laughs> What do we do? I can read the parrot again, or, of course, the uh, seashell that Lonnie Donegan left. Which would you like to hear? Parrot. The parrot? Yeah, I'd like to hear the parrot. The parrot brought in by Christopher Strawley. He said, there do be a spate of pirates after pieces of eight. If they knew what the treasure was, no wonder there do be a spate. He. Doobie. He doobie. What about doobie? <laughs> What's a doobie? <laughs> doobie doobie doobie. Yeah. So what are you going to do? One's got to be rejected right now. What do you think? The worm? You fancy rejecting this one? No, we'll hold no, on to that for a bit. All right, well, it's going to be the worm or the, uh, or the parrot. Which one's got to go? It's the worm. Yeah, yes, all right, it's the worm. Yes? Worm. Yep. You're going to reject the worm? Yes. Definitely, Lance Percival's worm's got to be rejected. This prize is in and then it's out. Perhaps you'll need a pail. We'll get you hooked without a doubt on the finish to this tail. So, here we go. A fish goes in and out of the water, a bin goes in and out of the house. Well, we know the bin's gone, right? But we said you'd get hooked. Put two and two together, you would hook fish. But you wouldn't have gone fishing, actually, Rupert. What you've rejected here, and you too, Jenny, is a year's supply of fish. Now, just have a look at this. <laughs> Come over here and have a look. 
Just come. Oh, there's a few O's and R's over here. Oh, look. Oh. Just look what you've got there. I don't think you have to look. You can smell, can't you? <laughs> yes, it's a real pen and ink here. <laughs> We've got everything. There's havoc there. There's crabs. There's live lobsters running around here somewhere. There's smoked salmon. It's all there. Every Friday, you've had a delivery to your house. That's what would happen. Any fish you wanted, and to go with it, there was this superb garden barbecue that you could use when you wanted to barbecue some meat one way or the other. Now, there's a pretty penny there one way or Are you? Do you eat fish, by the way? A bit, yeah. A bit, not but a not that not much, right? Much. It's been rejected. It's got to go away. Take it away. Thanks, girls. Thanks, fellas. Thank you come to the table. There we are. Come round there. Oh, dear. What about that? I think some of our audience could have done with that prize. You could have done, love, couldn't you? Oh, you love your fish. Well, here we are down to the last two, and of course I can read both of these again. Now, I'll read you the one you hung on to all the time. Lonnie brought this in, the shell toy. It says, she sells seashells on the seashore. If you say seashells, you're knocking on the door. Right. That's what Lonnie said. Chris Strawley said, do, there do be a spate of pirates after pieces of eight. If they knew what the treasure was, no wonder there do be a spate. Now... You got rid of the bin. You're going to take a nice prize home with you tonight. That we do know. And it's entirely up to you. It's your decision. What do you think? Knocking on the door. Could be something like a caravan for seaside well, holidays. Could be, couldn't, couldn't it? it? Well, it could be that hotel. In the what hotel? <laughs> oh, what do you mean? What, what this one here? No, the, no, no. Oh, this one here. On that one. <laughs> I see. Did you have a holiday this year? No. no. Oh. Any particular reason for that? You couldn't afford one? <laughs> well, having a, another baby was... Oh, really? Well, that, that's a good we reason. Afford Fair one. enough, but I'll go along with we that, yeah. One. Okay, so what do you do? One's got to go. That one? Yes. yes. Do you reckon? Yes. 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 You want to reject yes. the... You've stuck with that all yes. the way down the line. Yes. And you want to reject the parrot? Yep. Yes. Definitely. Yes. Definitely. Okay, so you're rejecting the parrot brought in by Chris Strawley. That dubious fate of pirates. That's right. Hold him tight. <laughs> After pieces of eight, if they knew what the treasure was, no wonder there do be a spate. So in rejecting the parrot, we said, do be a spate. You've been re repeating that to yourself. We said, do be a spate twice in the rhyme. Do be a spate. Now, that, in fact, is an anagram. Have you any <laughs> idea what it could be an anagram of? Do there do be a spate. Well, I'll tell you exactly what it is, because you've rejected this fabulous speedboat. Have a look at it. <laughs> My goodness, look at this for a price. Isn't this fantastic? There you are, fiberglass. There's our own emblem on the side there. Can you see that? There's Dusty and a 321. It's fabulous. It would seat four or five. This, would, this, uh, this motor here, it does 50 to the gallon. No, 50 miles per hour. 30 knots, that's it. <laughs> fabulous. It really is a terrific prize. Now, would you have had anywhere to put this if you'd have won it? Probably not, no. no. <laughs> you'd have found somewhere, Rupert, right? Probably, yeah. Yes, of yeah, course yeah, you would. Yeah. Along the M40 somewhere, yeah. I know. <laughs> it's been rejected, <laughs> fellas. Karen, it's got to go away. Take it away. Back to the table. Come on. Come over here. OK, Jenny, Rupert, stand just there. You've rejected that. I think you'll agree. That really was a sensation. Oh, it was. Prize, isn't it? <laughs> OK, and this is the one you stuck with all along. Lonnie Donegan brought in the shell toy, and you think it's... Well, <laughs> not too sure. Not, not too, too sure, sure now. No. That one to the boat. She sells seashells on a seashore, on the seashore. If you say seashells, you're knocking on the door. So let's see if you were knocking on the door. You're knocking on the door, that means you're very close to seashells. But there's no place called seashells. What you have won, absolutely right, two weeks in the Seychelles. Look at this. <laughs> Well, you might not have got your holiday this year, but you're certainly well, going to have one next year. Two weeks in the Seychelles. You're going to stay on the island of Mahoy, so they tell me. I don't care where it is, it looks fantastic yeah, from here. Does. Just look at that. Does. Isn't that beautiful? There you go. Are you happy about that, Rupert? Well, we certainly are. How about yeah. you, Jenny? Yes? yes. Yeah. There you go. Two fabulous weeks in the Seychelles, and very, very good luck to you. Good luck, Jenny. Thank you. you too, Rupert. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Wonderful. There you go. <laughs> Lovely. There it is.
Jenny here with your holiday voucher. That's the island of Mahoy. That's where you're going to stay whenever you want to go. Fortnight there. Ladies and gentlemen, I love it when the people like this work it out from the moment the game starts. They've stuck with it and their belief has come true. You've got the holiday you wanted. Wonderful. We're back with you next week on Friday. Three, two, one. Have a good week. Good night, everybody.